Hello, everyone, welcome back. This is Easy Learn AI. In the previous video, we introduced the limitations of the perceptron and presented the concept of a multilayer neural network. A multilayer neural network is more powerful in many ways compared to a single layer perceptron. Multilayer neural networks continued to evolve and ultimately led to what we now know as deep learning. There have been significant differences between multilayer neural networks and perceptrons. Today, we will focus on the activation function. The activation function we will learn about today played a crucial role in transforming relatively simple neural networks into complex ones capable of various functions, much like deep learning itself. So, let's start by exploring the activation function today. Chapter 1, The Limitations of the Step Function In the previous video, we introduced the step function as the activation function. The step function outputs 0 when the function's value is below a specific threshold and outputs 1 when the function's value is equal to or above that threshold. This step function is nonlinear. However, the step function had a significant drawback. To explain this drawback, let's briefly review how we calculate the output of a single-layer perceptron, as we discussed in the previous video. To start, we need to set random weights for each connection. Now, let's input our data into the perceptron, we calculate the sum of the products of the input values and their respective connection weights. When we pass this sum through the step function, we get an output of zero, as seen in the previous video. However, there's a problem. Even if we update the connection weights through the perceptron's learning algorithm and make the calculation result larger, the output still remains zero. In extreme cases, whether the perceptron's calculation result is 0.001 or 0.499, the output remains zero. While 0.499 is indeed the better predictions than 0.001 the internal differences are ignored, and the error remains the same at 1. From the perspective of 0.499, it's maddening. So, can we find an activation function that reflects the differences in internal values in the error? This is why we need activation functions in the following form. Among activation functions of this kind, the most representative one is the sigmoid function. Chapter 2, The Sigmoid Function The sigmoid function looks like an S-shaped curve, making it appear smoother compared to the step function. This seemingly small difference became a crucial innovation that opened the era of multilayer neural networks. We will delve into this in more detail in upcoming videos. But the reason this small difference had such a significant impact is that the sigmoid function is differentiable. For multilayer perceptron training, we use an algorithm called backpropagation, which relies on gradient descent. Differentiability is a requirement for gradient descent. The topic of differentiability belongs to the field of mathematics, so we won't discuss it here. So, at this point, Please remember that the differentiable sigmoid function opened new possibilities for multilayer perceptrons. One of the advantages of the sigmoid function is that it can represent differences in internal values that couldn't be represented with the previous step function. In other words, the sigmoid function outputs values between 0 and 1, allowing for a wider range of error calculations compared to the binary output of the step function. Moreover, the output between 0 and 1 can be interpreted as probabilities, giving meaning to the neural network's output. For instance, in a classifier that distinguishes between dogs and cats, the sigmoid function can output probabilities between 0 and 1. While converting to probabilities can have various meanings, the most crucial aspect is that the neural network's output transforms into meaningful numbers rather than simple values. For example, if someone says their shoe size is 11, you can't definitively tell whether it's large or small. However, if you know that shoe size 11 is in the top 95%, you can finally determine that the person has large feet. Similarly, 
representing the neural network's output as probabilities between 0 and 1 allows for a better expression of the true meaning of the data, input values. While the sigmoid function has its advantages, it also has limitations, such as the vanishing gradient problem and oscillations during weight updates. In the next video, we will explore these limitations in more detail and introduce various other activation functions that overcome these weaknesses. We appreciate your engagement and look forward to exploring further with you in the next session. Until then, farewell. Your interest and love for this channel help a lot in preparing these lectures, so please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button.